Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Whoa, baby. Now here comes the film that you never knew you were craving. A return to the emotional science fiction of the mid-80s. I'm talking Amblin Entertainment, Steven Spielberg, you know the ones. They create a palpable sense of wonder. And Midnight Special is a grand return to this type of filmmaking. Not an homage, a return. Indie director Jeff Nichols has made an awe-inspiring, heartwarming, and breathtaking tale that will grab you from its very first minutes and keep you on the edge of your seat until its poignant and startling final shot. Remember two weeks ago when I called 10 Cloverfield Lane the best film of 2016 so far? Well, the king is dead. Long live the king. Midnight Special is nothing less than this year's Ex Machina, that low-budget sci-fi film that is so effective, that does so much with so little, that unassuming film that hits you so thoroughly in the sweet spot that you have to run out and grab everyone you know and tell them that you just saw a movie that they've never heard of and that they must go out and see it right now. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Later this week, Warner Brothers will be unloading an absolutely huge superhero movie into thousands of theaters nationwide. Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice cost hundreds of millions to make, hundreds of millions to market, and there's not a single person on Earth who is not aware of it at this point. And you know what? That's fine. It's sort of par for the course these days. But what makes this slightly obscene is that just one week before they unleash this mega-budgeted behemoth on over 4,000 screens, the very same studio, Warner Brothers, launched Midnight Special on only five. Five screens, New York and Los Angeles, that's it. I can't speak yet as to whether this thing is worth the trouble and the money spent on it, but Midnight Special deserves so much better. Prepare yourself, because this film goes into wide release on April 1st, and it is perfect. That's right, a perfect film. Every element, the writing, the performances, the score, the special effects, each one is executed perfectly, and the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. You can give credit for this to director Jeff Nichols, whose previous independent films, Mud and Take Shelter, showed he can do a lot with a small budget. And by all means, if you haven't heard of those two gems, seek them out right away. Here, working with a $15 million budget, his biggest yet, and yet still a fraction of the budget of most studio pictures, he tells a familiar story, but with a unique and singular voice, and the result is breathtaking. He marshals a talented cast and crew to make a film that evokes the best themes, moments, feelings, and images from sources as rich and diverse as E.T., Poltergeist, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, The Sixth Sense, Heck, there's even some of last year's Tomorrowland in there. The first indication you're in for something different is the way the film begins right in the thick of the story. It does not slow down to explain things to you, or even really to introduce the characters. You're just thrust into the story, and the movie respects your ability to pick up the thread and follow it while you fill in the blanks as you go along. And that story is this. There's a kid and his father, and they're on the run from well, from multiple people, including government agencies and another group of people with, uh, a very strange agenda. Because that boy is not like us. And I would consider that a spoiler, but clearly the studio doesn't care because they put that line on the poster, in the trailer, and the hashtag that they want us to use when talking about it. Hashtag, he's not like us. So, I guess I can tell you that much. Like I said, part of the thrill of this movie is the feeling of personal discovery, of making observations and piecing together clues, allowing the unspoken history of the characters to snap into focus in the back of your mind while the plot zips along, not really waiting for you to catch up. Midnight Special has a lot to say about the potency of faith and personal beliefs in the face of the unexplainable. At its core, though, the film is about parental love, plain and simple. If you've ever had a kid that is really sick and felt that terrifying helplessness, dread, or impotence over the situation, then this movie will hit you right where you live. It's okay. It's okay. 
Michael Shannon, a staple of all of Jeff Nichols' films, is especially captivating here as a father who is driven at all times purely by the love for his son. Even when the choices he faces could be unfathomable to most parents, in this context, those choices all make sense, and Shannon makes you feel it all. I'm always worried about you. I like worrying about you. That's the deal. The cast is just full of actors tearing into this rich material, especially Adam Driver, who... Uh, Alright, the less said about his character, the better, but he is just fantastic here. A word of caution. Despite the PG-13 rating, and despite all of the family-friendly movies I name-checked earlier, this story here is told for adults and mature teens only. The movie itself is intense, sometimes violent and gut-wrenching, and it has a grounded and realistic tone which is partly what makes the film transcendent in its final reel. Special effects are used only when necessary, and the world around the CGI is so authentic that when these supernatural things do occur, they create more awe in 10 seconds than 30 full minutes of costumed superheroes demolishing a computer-generated city. This film is an easy, extra-large bag of popcorn for me. Midnight Special is the product of a sure-handed and confident storyteller with a unique voice. This film doesn't spoon-feed you information, but doesn't leave anything unexplained either. A reminder of how affecting on every level those Amblin films were way back in the day. Midnight Special is truly special indeed. Ever complain about how they don't make them like they used to anymore? Well, hey, guess what? Warner Brothers did make one. They didn't buy as many billboards for it, and they don't have nearly as much of their fortunes riding on it, but if the purpose of this show is for me to find these diamonds in the rough and to tell you about them, then here, pay attention to me now. Midnight Special, write it down. It's not playing in IMAX or 3D, just regular old 2D, a regular old movie in the regular old theater. Hey, you wanna complain about the current state of studio motion pictures? Fine, I do it all the time. But if you don't go see this extraordinary film and then tell all of your friends to go see it, then you know what? You get what you get. All right, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget, you can follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. Also, take just a moment to click the icon right down there to visit our channel. While you're there, do us a favor and click subscribe. You'll find us easier next time. You'll stay updated on the release of upcoming videos and it helps us out. So please, subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. Now go out and see Midnight Special. April 1st, get on it.